Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and in this tutorial I'd like to sort of change a sort of modern image and make it look dated, faded, a bit worn, a few scratches on it and that should be something like this as you can see it sort of does a very sort of vintage feel to it I have done this to another image here So again, you have this sort of vintage dated feel to it. Now I know there are plenty of tutorials out there, be it for Photoshop that you could adapt, or Affinity Photo ones. Now this was a, a Photoshop tutorial that I came across, and it used a channel mixer, which is not something I've seen done for this type of tutorial. So I thought I'd sort of try and convert that Photoshop tutorial and make it work in Affinity Photo. Now at the outset I'm going to try and stick to as close as I can to the settings that were in the Photoshop tutorial but you don't have to, you can adapt the settings to suit your particular image and um, and yeah, and the blend modes and all that so you don't have to stick to what I'm going to sort of use but you know, just use those as a guideline. Also this would probably work on just about any image be it landscape or portrait but if you're going to go for a portrait image it might help if you sort of start with an image that already has a sort of vintage feel to it which is why I picked these two pictures from Pixabay and I will add links to these in the description for this tutorial along with links to the texture that I'm going to use and this other texture that I'm going to use so let's get started let me just delete this layer so we're just working on this layer here so once you've opened the image that you're going to start with what you want to do is come to the adjustments icon which is down here which looks like the half moon sort of thing and then just click on that and come up to channel mixer now by default it will start off on RGB and be red if you click on this drop down menu and change it to grey it will be grey and intensity rather than sort of a colour and what I'm going to do is I set the intensity at I'm just going to drop it down slightly for this particular image I'm dropping it down to 99 and the alpha I'm going to drop this down to minus 9 and the offset I'm going to raise that to about 12 I'm just sort of sort of knocking out some of the contrast and making it slightly duller that way and so we can now just close that one and now we're going to add a levels adjustment and I'm going to change the output of the black level which is the two newer um, adjustments which were added in the newer versions of Affinity Photo so I'm going to drop the or raise the black level up to about 17 which again is making the image a lot duller and a lot less contrasty and I can now close that then I'm going to add a new pixel layer and I'm going to flood fill that with black and I'm going to change the screen uh, blend mode to screen so, it, it, so you can now see through that and we're back to the image where we were and but to this layer we're going to add some effects and so you can just click on this FX button here to open up the layer effects and we're going to come to 
gradient overlay. Just move this to one side so we can see that better. And I'm going to click on the word gradient overlay so we can see all the options for that. And I'm going to change the type of gradient to radial. And I'm also going to change the blend mode of this to screen. And then I'm going to alter the scale X slider. And I'm going to move this up to 315, 16, something like that. Let's try 15. And the Y slider. I'm going to come up to 174, 75, whichever I can get close to, 174. So you can see we're sort of making this area in the middle here more visible and the outside is a much more faded. Now these next ones here, the X and Y, will alter the position of that clear point. So, so you'll want this off over the face or whatever the main point of the subject is of your particular image. So I'm going to change the offset of the X just up to, probably easier to type this in, 1 and the Y offset is going to be minus 15. So that is now moving that clear area over the lady's face. And I'm going to lower the opacity um, of this from 100% down to about 80%. Just so you get a little bit more of the outside area that's a bit more in focus. I'm going to leave the angle at zero. So I can now close that. So now we've sort of got the sort of basic adjustments done. We now sort of start to add the textures. So I'm going to start with this texture which is I quite like because you've got the sort of already got a vignette effect in the middle and you've got the scratches and the texture that's in it. So I'm just going to right click that, copy, come back to the image, edit and paste, come to the move tool. Now the first thing I'm going to have to do is rotate this so I'll come up to this sort of handle at the top here so I get the double ended curved arrows, hold down the shift key so it will rotate in 15 degree angles. I have it the right way around, move it into position, get it in the middle and then just resize it to fit the image and once I've done that I can change the blend mode. Now the screen and a lot of these will work in this a light and screen dodge on it or can work differently depends on your image. Um, I'm going to go with lighten and then reduce its opacity down to somewhere between 15 and 20%. So I've got a bit of that texture around her there. Some of the, those scratches are starting to show through. Now you could if you want you could open up a second um, scratch textured image that you may want to use or you could use the same one again. So if I just use the same one again and press if I did this right oh, I seem to have lost it. Let's go back to copy. Sorry about that. Right, so this time I'm going to rotate it the opposite way. 
and I won't resize this one, the scratches from the, the vignette effect will be different and I can try a different blend mode or even the same blend mode and reduce that so opacity to an effect that you like you can you know resize that and get a different effect and move it around to suit your taste yeah I quite like that one so that's on about 11% and it's again it's on the light and so you know suit do whatever suits your particular image so now we just need the sort of paper texture and worn paper so I'm going to copy that come back to my image and paste that layer on again I'm going to rotate and resize this put this in the middle roughly there we go and then resize that and just need to change the blend mode of this to multiply and again you can change the opacity just to get an effect that you like so let's try that on about 44 percent so i'll press ctrl and zero to bring that size back up and basically you know that is the end of this effect but you could sort of add sort of a sepia look to it by again coming up to the adjustment and you can come you can use possibly recolor but you probably better go with lens filter and by default it's already a sort of an orange color but you could make that a sort of a darker brown color or more orangey whichever suits your taste and increase or lower the opacity again to suit your taste so I'm going to leave that about there so you've got a, a vintage looking image that's faded a bit worn got a few scratches on it so that is the end of the tutorial and I hope that you have enjoyed that so thank you for watching and goodbye